Hi, this is Eric Sloof over at ntpro.nl and in this webinar we are going to take a look at VMware HA and if it works out of the box or not. Uh, first of all, let's start with a question. What is the most configured admission control policy? When you are visiting your clients or you're looking at your own environment, a lot of people have disabled the admission control. Why? Because there was a failure when trying to power on a virtual machine. Insufficient resources to certify the configured failover level for vSphere HA. Hmm, that's strange. So people are configuring HA, they don't put in additional settings. Uh, and maybe they create a big reservation on a virtual machine and that reservation will be leading for the slot size. And once they try to power on additional virtual machines, the cluster is full because of the large slot size. So let's take a look at enabling HA within an HA cluster. Just put the mark in right here, enable HA monitoring, define the fill over capacity. In this case, there's one host failure allowed. And once you're done, then you're okay or not. So this is the uh, screen them from the web client. We can also configure the same setting with the vSphere client, enable HA and configure one host for one host failure allowed. So if you are only configuring this setting and a lot of people do, then that's not enough. I'm going to show you what happens when one of your ESX hosts fail, then the virtual machines will be automatically powered on on the other two ESX hosts and you need shared storage, you need, uh, uh, you need a correct configured network and if the port groups are all labeled with the same text then you don't have any problems. So if you are powering all those virtual machines on the other hosts you need to create some extra headroom and the extra headroom right here needs to be enough capacity to power on the virtual machine on ESX02 and ESX03. So how do you calculate the, the reserve capacity on those two hosts? When you are configuring a host failure allowed, it's done through a slot size. So the slot size is based on the biggest reservation for CPU and memory uh, of any virtual machine in the cluster. But if you don't reserve any slot size, then the default slot size for CPU will be 32 megahertz. And the default slot size for memory will be the virtual machine overhead. So in this case, I have one virtual machine with 32 megahertz and six, uh, six, 96, 69 MB. So uh, the total slots in the cluster are 222 and this cluster only has three hosts. So be careful with, don't, uh, be careful with not specifying a reservation at all and just leave it up to the virtual machine overhead because it's not real a real good value to, to, to size the slots of a virtual machine in an HA cluster. On the other hand, if you are creating a reservation, then the virtual machine reservation of the biggest virtual machine for CPU and memory will be used as the slot size. So in this case, I have 512 megahertz slot size for CPU and I have one gigabyte slot size for memory. And on top of that, the virtual machine overhead will be added. So in this case, I have 12 slots in the cluster and I have seven available slots and four fill over slots. So even though these virtual machines are not occupying the complete space uh, that is needed by virtual machine one, every powered on virtual machine will get its slots and the resources based on this slot will be reserved for every individual virtual machine that is powered on. So this is also not a wise decision because a lot of small virtual machines will occupy the, the, the space uh, only VM1 needs. So there is an alternative. You can put in, uh, you can put in uh, a slot size by hand. So if you are going to specify a slot size, then there are two advanced settings. The DAS slot mem in MB and the DAS VM memory in MB. And this setting is specifying the maximum slot size. So if you have a virtual machine with a higher reservation, then you can trim down the slot size with this setting. And this setting is uh, deciding what the minimum slot size is. So if you don't have any reservations at all, then this value will be used 
to create a fixed slot size. So there is a setting for memory and there is a setting for CPU. Uh, when I'm going back to this setting, then you will see that uh, virtual machines can occupy multiple slots. So the small virtual machines are able to live in their own specified slot, but the bigger virtual machines like virtual machine 5 and 6 need a bigger slot and the problem is that they don't fit in a small slot so the virtual machines require multiple slots is this a real problem not at all and what you see here is that you can uh, create a fixed slot size explicitly in vSphere 5.1 so if you're using the, the the web client you don't have to add in uh, advanced values you can use the user interface to uh, to create a fixed slot, slot size and uh, what is done is that these settings are combined together and they are specifying the fixed slot size. So if you have a reservation, then the reservation is, is, is stopped by the setting and if you don't have a reservation at all, this uh, setting will be the specified slot size. So what you see here is that you can calculate which virtual machines are occupying multiple slots. So when I'm going back to this slide, we see that a lot of virtual machines will fit in the normal slot size, but there are some virtual machines with a reservation that is higher than the slot size that was specified by the fixed value. So these virtual machines occupy multiple slots. Is this a real problem? No, not at all. But if virtual machines are powered on again, when one host fails, and these virtual machines are virtual machine 5 and virtual machine 6, then there might be a problem with fragmented resources. So in this case, ESX1 is going down, the virtual machines are restarted on ESX2, and virtual machines uh, are also restarted on ESX3. And what happens is that the resources are fragmented through the cluster. So I have VM6 right here, and VM6 is not able to power on either on ESX2 or 3 because uh, those servers are they, they have enough capacity but the capacity is fragmented and the virtual machine can only run on one ESX host at a time so that's why this virtual machine won't power on it might be a good idea to put in a higher restart priority for this particular virtual machine so virtual machines that need more resources than the slot size must be configured with a higher restart priority. One other thing I see a lot at clients is that people are building their cluster and uh, they ran into an issue and they don't have enough resources anymore and they are adding a new host to the cluster and the new host has more memory or more CPU than the existing hosts in the cluster and VMware HA also, uh, only looks at uh, the worst case scenario so in this case uh, if this host is going down, the virtual machines are powered on on the other ESX servers, but the space right here cannot be used to power on virtual machines because if this host is going down, the virtual machines cannot be powered on on the other ESX servers. When you are looking at the advanced settings, then we see host memory right here, 3 multiplied by 16, uh, offers us available slots 18, and when I put in one host with 32 gigabytes and two hosts with 16 gigabytes i have more slots in the cluster but the available slots will stay the same because the worst case scenario still applies and uh, adding an, a, a big host in the cluster for hsa is not a wise idea so what else can we do we can look at the percentage of resources reserved so this is the other setting within hsa and when the esx host is going down the virtual machines will be powered on on the other two ESX servers. So this capacity right here, how is it calculated? Who is deciding how many CPU resources are reserved as uh, fill over space? So when we are configuring this setting, we have to put in the percentage option right here and we can specify the amount of CPU and memory percentage that must be uh, available for, uh, for fill over capacity. But this is a tricky one because what a lot of people don't know is that the percentage will add up every individual virtual machine reservation and then uh, every powered on virtual machine and then uh, it will calculate how many space is left for fill over capacity. So a lot of people don't configure individual reservations on virtual machines. 
Um, why not? Because if you are configuring a memory reservation on an individual virtual machine, the memory cannot be used by other virtual machines anymore. So a lot of people don't use reservations and they will leave the reservations at zero. You see that when you are, are using reservations, then the reservations will be added up and it will be calculated and we see a current CPU, CPU and memory fill over capacity. But if you don't create any reservations, then you will see a strange phenomenon because all the reservations are still zero and I have a fill over capacity of, uh, of nearly 100%. So let's take a look at the laboratory. Uh, my three ESX hosts are doing nearly 100% CPU. If I add up the reservations of these virtual machines, it will be a very low figure because the reservations are zero. And I have a fill over capacity of nearly 100%. So even though the virtual machines are, are utilizing a lot of CPU resources, the fill over capacity is still uh, pretty high, nearly 100%. So resources reserved is not utilization. It's very important to keep that in mind. Can you specify a slot size in an HA, HA cluster that is configured for the percentage? Yes, you can. And if you are going to look at the advanced settings, DAS, VM, CPU, min megahertz and min megabytes, then you can specify values and these values will be used as a default reservation setting for every virtual machine that is powered on in a percentage cluster. And then you will see the right figures here. So when you are looking at a web client, there are a new set of new screens available right here. vSphere HA will show you for the percentage option the amount of CPU that is reserved either by setting a fixed slot size or by adding up the individual uh, reservations for the virtual machines. The same goes for memory. And we see the amount of resources that cannot be used because of the fill over capacity. Also, the web client will show you, yes, a different layout for configuring HA and putting in the advanced settings. So this is the web client. So when we are looking at the last option for specifying uh, a special fill over host, what happens is that if you are adding a host to the cluster and you are configuring it as a spare host, ESX01 goes down, all the, all the virtual machines are also down because the memory is lost and the virtual machines will be restarted on the spare host. This is the only policy that actually is able to guarantee that virtual machines will be powered on. But this is also a bit of a, a utopia because you are not going to use 100% of resources, you always have some headroom and the headroom uh, will can be used as fill over capacity. And this host can only, yeah, you can power on virtual machines, but you know, you don't know if this host is configured correctly. So if someone uh, has misconfigured a port group or there is a bad memory dim in this machine, then you will find it out once virtual machines are powered on right here. So but it's the only policy that is actually 100% guaranteed that virtual machines can be powered on on the other host. So let's take a look at this setting within the vSphere client. When we are looking at VMware 8a, we can enable uh, the admission control policy and specify fill over hosts. Once you click this link, you will land on this page and here you can specify which ESX host will be your fill over host, a designated fill over host. So if you are designating a fill over host and you are migrating virtual machines to the fill over host, you will get a message stating that the host is configured as the designated fill over host and you are not allowed to migrate a virtual machine to ESX3 and also DRS won't migrate any virtual machines to the fill over host and uh, don't try to attempt a VM to a VM affinity rules because the fill over hosts are not uh, allowed to run virtual machines only in case of disaster. So the fill over host can have three colors, green, then everything is okay, there are no HA errors and there are no virtual machines powered on on the fill over host. If you have a yellow situation, then there might be some HA errors, 
Uh, or there might be powered on virtual machines on that specific host. And if you have a red status, then the host is disconnected. It can be a maintenance mode or there are vSphere HA errors. So try to monitor the status of your cluster very carefully when using a fill over host. So the myth is busted. VMware HA needs to be configured either with setting a reservation or setting an advanced setting. Uh, be very careful with reservations because reservations are responsible for your slot size. If you are uh, putting in reservations on virtual machines, then you will see that your cluster becomes full rather quickly and always check the runtime information. The runtime information will show you fill, fill over capacity and slot size. So this was Eric Sloop with a special webinar about HA. And I'm signing off. Bye bye.